Welcome back to the Work From Home Center. We're gonna get started right away here on four made from scratch meals. All the recipes will be in the description. Don't worry about taking anything down. And as always, start where you're at. Take this as a guidance and make modifications where it fits for your family. First up on the list of meals this week is going to be a barilla style inspired taco. It's not gonna be your traditional barilla. Uh, it's a little bit more of a weeknight version. Uh, and maybe a little bit Americanized, probably. Um, so I am just starting out with making some sourdough tortillas. I put about a half a cup of starter into my bowl and some water and some flour as well. I'll put all the exact measurements in the description. And then I put a little bit of salt and oil and then I gave it a good mix in the bowl as much as I could until um, it really wasn't mixing as well. And I just used a fork here. I would love a dough mixer. Uh, that's on my Christmas list, but fork works great. And then I put a little bit of flour down and I just hand kneaded this. Now you can totally put it in your KitchenAid. I just wanted to show you guys that you don't need any crazy fancy tools to make a lot of these homemade meals from scratch. I think that is the most intimidating part about making a lot of homemade meals is that you think you need all these fancy gadgets and kitchen tools, but you really don't. Your hands and a bowl and a fork, they can do wonders and really, really make you uh, go far. Next, I'm just putting the mixed dough back into the bowl. I'm going to put a tea towel over it. And in this case, I let it rest four hours. But if you can rest longer, like 24 hours, it's even better. I just forgot to mix it up sooner. So that's just kind of where we were at. It worked out perfectly fine and they taste awesome. So now I'm going to chop up a whole onion and half of it is going to go in our sauce and the other half is going to go into our meat mixture. Then I'm going to chop up three very large cloves of garlic. If you have smaller cloves, I would use more, but about half of this is going to go into our sauce and the other half in our meat mixture, just like the onions. Next, we're going to add about two tablespoons of butter into a hot pan, and then we'll add in our onions and garlic, and remember just half of each here. As that sautés, we are going to start to chop up some tomatoes here. These are just ones that I have from the garden. You can really use any tomatoes here, and it doesn't have to be cut up in any fancy way. We're going to end up blending the sauce, so as long as they're chopped up and can sauté, that is perfectly fine. Give her a good mix and then we are going to open up our can of chilies and adobo and we're going to give it a rough chop here. Again, it doesn't need to be diced any way, fancy way. We are just going to blend it up after it sautés for a couple of minutes. Mix it up, get all of those spices incorporated and then we're going to add in the tomatoes. Now these are again just tomatoes that I had from my mom's garden actually. She was picking up everything before the last frost. And so I was the beneficiary of all of these veggies that you see on the table here. So now I am going to just start to get the uh, tortillas ready. So I'm just taking small balls um, and I'm just rolling them out. Now I wanted these to be smaller tacos, so they are gonna be on the smaller side, but don't underestimate how thin you can roll these out. Um, I tend to sometimes forget how thick they are, even though they look thin. So when in doubt, roll them out thinner than you think they need to be. After the tomato mixture has been sauteing for a couple of minutes, you're gonna wanna transfer it all into a blender so that we can blend it up and make our sauce. I ended up adding about a cup or so of water to this mixture. It's really gonna depend on how much liquid your tomatoes have and how much water you need to put in there, but you're gonna want it nice and liquidy. Then we're gonna put our tortillas on. I put them on for about a minute on each side and I put a timer so I don't forget about it. Then we're going to put our blended mixture into a bowl. We use that to dip the tortillas in later on. And then we're going to cook about two pounds of ground beef. And before I lose you, I am going to put a little bit of liver in here. This is totally optional. I blend it up so that it mixes into the meat well. It is super good for babies. So I try to eat it when I can. Um, and I usually only put it into meals that have super strong flavors like this one so that I can mask the liver 
taste, but again, totally optional. Then you're going to put the rest of your onions and your garlic in here and saute those together and cook it all um, so that it's nice and married together. Then we're going to put about two tablespoons of paprika. Don't forget to flip those tortillas. And then we're going to put about a tablespoon or so of chili or taco seasoning. And we'll mix that all up and then we will set it aside for later. And here I'm just grating up some cheese to put on the tortillas. I really like to shred my own because I think it melts so much better. And then we are going to start dipping our tortillas in that lovely sauce, get it nice and coated. And then we are going to place it right on the skillet. And it does get a little bit messy, um, but we're gonna put some cheese on there too, as much as you want. I like a lot of cheese. And then we're gonna put a little bit of that meat mixture in there, probably a couple tablespoons worth. And we are gonna close it up. And then, um, we're just going to let it sit for about two to three minutes per side. I set a timer so I don't forget. And then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. And this is a little up close. It is cheesy and good and delicious. Last thing we're going to whip up is a quick cilantro lime crema. Now, I wish I had done this before I started anything, just so I had the time to let the flavors marry a little bit. I used Greek yogurt here because that's what I had on hand. I didn't actually have any sour cream, but I would probably prefer sour cream, but they're all about the same to me. I put in the cilantro and then one whole lime and mixed it all up together. And then I put that on top of the tacos and it was delicious. So this is what it looks like in the end. Here is the crema and a nice little action shot here. Um, I tried to show all the ooey gooey cheese, but honestly, the video doesn't even do it justice. It was so good. All right, it is Tuesday and we are making a fall vegetable orzo skillet. Now, usually on Tuesdays, I actually uh, do leftovers since I drive into work on that day and I have an hour and a half commute each way and I am not about cooking when I get home. It's the last thing I wanna do. So that's why I make a lot of large meals so that we can eat them um, as leftovers and also take them for lunches. So to start out here, I am just peeling the butternut squash. I use regular potato peeler for this and it works pretty well. After I get most of the skin peeled off, then I chop it in half and I start to scoop out the insides. Um, we don't really wanna cook the seeds, it's not gonna taste good. You could totally roast them on the side if you want. I usually just compost them. Next, I started to chop up the butternut squash into bite-sized pieces. And if you notice, I have a little helper here um, in my other hand, and I just wanted to kind of comment on um, cooking with kids. I know sometimes it can be a struggle, and you know, a lot of times our kids just want to be involved in what we're doing and have kind of that one-on-one -on -one time with us and live life with us. And so I know sometimes it can be it can be a little bit harder to get the things done that you want and it can feel a little impossible to still cook from scratch when you have little ones running around and who need your attention. Um, but just know that you're not alone and that it's okay if dinner gets done a little bit slower um, or if it's just not perfect, that's okay. I think that we're setting really awesome examples for our kiddos and um, I just, I want to encourage you to give this stuff a try even if you are in a difficult season of life with motherhood. I eventually made it through chopping all of that squash and I put it in a hot pan with a little bit of oil. I cut up half of the butternut squash and I saved half for breakfast this weekend. And then I started to cut up an acorn squash and peel that one as well. And I cut up half of this one too. Now you could totally do just one or the other here. I had both um, just from going to a farm recently and I really wanted to use up both. Um, so I decided to just use some for this recipe and some for a breakfast hash this weekend. But again, if you are just trying to make it simple, then just pick one and they, um, they'll be totally fine and it'll add great flavor still. Um, and then I again chopped this into bite-sized pieces and once I was done chopping, I added it to the skillet with the butternut squash. 
Then I peeled and chopped two carrots and I put them into a little bit smaller of pieces than the butternut squash. I just wanted to make sure that they cooked all the way and I just like smaller pieces of carrots, but you can definitely chop them the same size so that it's consistent. Then add those carrots to the pan and give it a nice stir. While those carrots are cooking with the squash, you're gonna wanna uh, dice up an onion. And I usually do about a half of an onion here. If you like a little more onion, you could totally do the whole thing. Then you'll also want to finely dice up garlic as well. Um, I'm always a big believer of more is more <laughs> with garlic, but I think I used a couple of cloves here. Definitely just use it at your discretion on however much you like. Then in a hot pan, add in tomatoes. I chose cherry tomatoes because I had an abundance from my mom's garden, but you could honestly use whatever tomatoes you like here, whatever might be on sale. And then you're going to want to take, while that's cooking, you're going to take your um, squash mixture and put it in a bowl. We are going to cook the meat in this pan. Alternatively, you could just use a new pan and cook the meat in there and, and just turn off the heat on this, whatever is easier. Give the tomatoes a stir. It should only take a couple of minutes for them to kind of blister. We're just trying to get them cooked and get a little bit of color on there. Then we'll add the other half of the onion and garlic in here and give it a stir. Let it saute for a few minutes. Then we will give our two pounds of ground beef a stir and let that cook. So this part requires a little bit of multitasking. We're going to put the tomatoes into the blender and blend that up. I would definitely use a different utensil here, but this is what I had on hand while also holding the camera. And then go ahead and give that a blend. Add a little bit of water if you need to, if it's too thick. Then drain the grease if you need to on your ground beef. And then we will add back in our squash mixture to the pan. And then also add the tomato puree that we just made. And then lastly, a, a whole box of orzo. And I like to let this just kind of soak in really quick before I add the additional liquids. Next, I added some thyme and some rosemary. Now, if you don't like those spices, you could totally change them up. You could probably do some paprika. Um, there's really a lot of options you could do here, uh, but I just love fall kind of spices like that, like thyme and rosemary, and I just think that it makes it a really nice fall dish with those. Then you want to add enough liquid so that everything is submerged, and you want to cover it. Uh, if you're using a cast iron skillet, you can just put some tin foil over it, stir it frequently, and cook it for about 10 minutes or so. You'll know it's done when the noodles are cooked. And this is what the final result looks like, and it is so good. This served us for a few meals. Wednesday is the unofficial pasta day in this house and I am here for it because I love pasta, my toddler loves pasta, and so does my husband. And frankly, there is just nothing better than homemade pasta and it's a little intimidating at first, but once you do it a few times, you really learn that it's not so bad. So I do about two, two and a half cups of flour. I, I don't measure anymore. And then I do four eggs and a splash of olive oil. I mix that in a well and you want to just start to slowly incorporate the flour until you start to get a little bit of a thicker slurry mixture. And here I'm going to make some sourdough pasta, totally optional with the sourdough, but I do think it gives it a really nice flavor. It's also really helpful for the gut if you let it ferment a little bit. I made this about four hours before over my lunch break. Um, and so, you know, it's probably not long enough to really get all of those fermentation benefits, but it really does help get the flavor in there. So again, you're just going to want to, you know, mix everything together. And once you start to get it, you know, incorporated enough, you can uh, move to a pastry cutter and really kind of just like fold in that flour and then just start to use your good old hands and roll and mix and knead all of that and I would say like overall this probably takes me five to ten minutes start to finish to really just incorporate this dough so it's it's not as time consuming as someone might think for starting off obviously the first few times you make it it might take longer but um, really if you haven't tried making your own pasta dough I really encourage you to do it it's going to make such a difference on the quality of your meal with that said, I mean, if all you have is time for a box of pasta on that day, I mean, go for it. You got to do what you got to do sometimes as a mom and, you know, you, you just got to get dinner on the table sometimes. So um, after you let it sit for at least 30 minutes, the longer you can let it sit, the better. You want to let that gluten kind of rest. You want to start to um, 
put it into smaller portions and roll it out. Now, you, if you have a pasta maker, awesome. I have one actually, but I, I really prefer to use a rolling pin and roll it out on the counter. Um, it's A, just a little bit of thera like little therapeutic for me, and I just find it faster. Like once I set up the pasta machine and get it all going, like I could have rolled out half of my dough already. So I just go this way and it, it's easy. And I use a pizza cutter to cut all of our pasta and it works just fine for us. So again, you really don't need any fancy tools to make your own homemade pasta. Um, it's, it's really not too bad. So, and today I am actually getting it all prepared before we go on a family walk. Um, a lot of times I will cook the pasta in batches while I'm also cooking the sauce. Uh, but this day I'm just trying to get all of the pasta together before we leave. Um, so now we are back from the walk at this point and I'm getting the sauce started and I have water boiling on the stove for the pasta. I put an entire stick of butter into the pan and then I diced up half of a red onion. Now you could use any onion here. This is just what I had on hand. Um, I had green onions actually and they had gone bad already with only being in the fridge for a few days, which was a real bummer. So um, just cutting that up and then I'm also cutting up about two to three cloves of garlic. Again, my philosophy more is more with garlic. You can never have too much in my opinion. So um, definitely just use as much as your family likes. All right, so now the pasta is going in the water. I did two batches of pasta. Um, I had a smaller pan going. I don't know why I didn't pick a bigger one, but uh, you could definitely do it all in the same if you have enough water, but I didn't want to overcrowd it and everything get stuck together. And then I am just adding the onion and garlic into the pan and letting that saute for a couple of minutes while the pasta cooks. Once it's done, I start to put it into the sauce and it really only takes about three minutes or so for the pasta to cook. Fresh pasta takes much less uh, time than uh, box pasta. And then I just put a bag of frozen peas here. You could really put any vegetable that you like. This is just what I had on hand and it went pretty well with dish. And then I'm going to put the zest of one lemon in there. Um, someone once told me like you're paying for the whole lemon, so don't forget to use the zest. And I thought that was a really good point. I'm also going to cut up about half of this lemon and squeeze the juice in here. And at this point, I have put all of the pasta in here. And then last thing you're going to do is grate a little bit of Parmesan cheese in here. I put um, probably maybe like a half a cup or so, and then I grated it over all of our bowls when I served it. Um, definitely just use as much or as little as you want. I really like the flavor and I think it adds to the dish. My toddler absolutely loved this one and we even had a little bit of leftovers, which is always great. Friday is absolutely pizza night, like almost every Friday in our house. And we love pizza, especially my husband. I think if he could eat it every single day, he absolutely would. So I made sourdough pizza dough here and I totally forgot to film me mixing up the dough, but this is just me kneading it here. I will absolutely put the uh, ingredients in the in the description below, but it's basically just flour, sourdough starter, salt, a little bit of oil and water. So nothing complicated here. And I just kind of kneaded it out for a couple of minutes. Again, I wanted to show you guys that you don't need like a fancy KitchenAid or anything like that to make a lot of these homemade breads for yourself. And I'm going to let this sit and rise for about four hours. If you were able to let it ferment like all sourdough, it's so much better, but I always forget to <laughs> prepare things ahead of time. So I am always under the gun and letting things rise, but that's okay. This is what it looks like after about four hours of rising. I always love seeing like that yeast kind of like all the bubbles and all of that stuff. It always just makes me so happy to see. Now, I usually can get about three pizza crusts out of this and we usually only make two. And so I always just freeze the third and it is so nice when we're in a pinch and I like haven't made anything and I can just take some pizza dough out of the uh, freezer and like whip something up. And you can literally make like calzones, anything with the pizza dough, like it's a lifesaver to have that. So highly recommend. I roll mine out. I know there's, like I said in my last video, there's people probably cringing like, oh, that's not authentic. Listen, we like the uh, thin crust and this is the best way for us to get it. And it is quick and it gets dinner on the table. So um, you do what you kind of do. Don't let anyone tell you 
how to make your own like homemade food. So um, I am just rolling this out and then I am going to put this on a hot cast iron skillet. Uh, if I am thinking ahead, I put it in the oven at 450 and let it heat up in there. Otherwise, I just turn it on medium on the burner and that helps kind of get the crust going while I put on all of the sauce and the cheese. So here I am just shredding up some mozzarella cheese and I use about eight ounces per pizza. And this is the one thing where I would not buy pre-shredded cheese for. You really want the nice melty factor that this kind of cheese has because if you get the stuff that is in the store pre-shredded it has um, like anti-caking agents on it and that will prevent it from melting really nicely and it'll be a real bummer when you take it out of the oven so now i am just putting the pizza dough on the hot uh, iron cast iron skillet and you have a little bit more time than you think to like kind of situate in position where it needs to be um, and if you have it in, and it's rolled out just a little bit too big you can just roll it down and make a little crust or you can purposely make it too big and have crust around the whole thing and then I just use plain old unseasoned tomato sauce for hours um, I like to not have all of the sugar and additives that a lot of the pre-made sauces have. Plus it is so much cheaper just to use a can of crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce. And then we just add a little bit of seasoning in ourselves. So we have like a pizza seasoning that has like oregano. It's basically like Italian seasoning and we just sprinkle that on there and that works awesome for us. And now I'm just adding on all of the cheese, the pepperoni, and just a little bit of diced red onion. A little goes a long way here, but it definitely adds a lot of really good flavor to the pizza. Then I toss it in the oven at 450 for about 10 minutes or so, and I broil it for about another minute or two after that. You can just check to see that the dough is done uh, periodically, and this is what it's going to look like when it's all done. Look at that ooey gooey cheese. It was so good. But wait, there's more. I'm all about using up leftovers in this house. And if you remember back to the Berea style tacos, we had this sauce and it was so dang good. And I was like, this would be awesome on a pizza. So I mixed a little bit of the red sauce and the Berea sauce and I put it on the pizza. And then I took the leftover ground beef that we had and I sprinkled that on with some cheese and I threw it in the oven. It was so dang good. I topped it with some cilantro and I honestly think it might be one of the favorite pizzas that I've made to date. So that concludes our week of meals this week. I hope you got some great ideas to serve your family with. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. It lets me know that I should keep making stuff like this. And if you make anything, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how it turned out.